Hey there, welcome to the Apartment Academy live broadcast, a production of Leonardo 24-7, the industry's leading operations and maintenance software. The Apartment Academy is the multifamily industry's only operations-focused podcast, and I'm the dean of the Apartment Academy, Daniel Cunningham. And what better subject within operations to discuss with you is there besides strategies you need to know to maximize your rents in a market where rates may be declining? or flat nailing, or we're going to find out here today, uh, or at least your competitors might be sort of leaping to concessions. Look, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us live here today. So we're going to jump right into the discussion with our visiting professor in residence, Tony Blake. Professor Blake is a popular international speaker, consultant, author, and comedian, which you probably will not be surprised by, uh, who inspires thousands of multifamily apartment industry professionals every year. She started leasing when she was 19 years old and opened her own training firm at 24 years old and is a recipient of the Multifamily Pro Industry Legend Award. Tony's infectious energy has built a social media following of over 43,000 followers. And now with over 30 years of training experience, her laugh while you learn approach has made Tony one of the most sought after experts in her field. And if you can't hang with us for today's entire live broadcast, not to worry. We will be publishing the information shared today through an ebook and also rebroadcasting segments at apartmentacademy.com next month. All of this is timely information. You're going to want to act on it immediately. So without wasting one more second, here is Tony Blake. Ooh. Professor yeah. Blake. Hey, hi, welcome Hello, to the Mr. Dean of the Apartment Academy. Yes, so, hey, welcome to the Ivy Covered Digital Halls here, the Stately Apartment Academy. It's good to see you. The lecture hall is is all yours. I love that. And I'm so, so excited that you invited me to do this. And I want to give credit and kudos to you for coming up with our title, Defending NOI in a Flat Market. And this right. is the Academy's first live yes. on LinkedIn. And so yay, yay to excited. you guys. And thank you for letting me be the first one to go live. Uh, Daniel mentioned that we're dividing this up into three sections. So we're going to be doing the crystal ball. That'll be first, right, Daniel? Yeah. And then uh, we'll be doing defending the rents in NOI in the second one. And then I'm going to talk about the new American dream, which is hashtag renting on easy street, baby. And I want you to know that I'm really big on follow up. So as this content comes and goes, it's not like you're never going to get it again. Not only are you going to get every one of the images that you see and an opportunity to go back to the live recordings that we're doing right now, um, but you're also going to get bonus information, implementation Ooh. plans, extra content, and my brand new defending NOI role-playing card game that your teams are going to literally be able to build confidence in that process. When somebody says to them, what's your special? They are going to know exactly how to defend those rents. Now, the Academy is found a couple of different ways, right? You can go, Dana, you were telling me they have a landing page, right? It's apartmentacademy.com. Right. So you've got that. If you go to Leonardo to the home, the mothership, and you go to resources, you'll also find a link to the landing page for apartmentacademy.com. And right now, if you take a second and scan that QR that I've put up there, that will take you immediately to Spotify. So I know some of you are on mobile phones. So um, when you get the ebook, you can do it. But um, when you go to the Leonardo page, there's also a link to go and make sure you register and subscribe on Spotify. When you do that, as each one of the three lives become available inside the Academy, you'll be given notification that that's available for your teams. Very cool. Thank so you. we're going to get into defending NOI, Daniel. Let's talk about it. I, I want to tell a quick story. So um, I loved the multifamily bro brainstorming. Uh, Tammy Sir did an amazing job with that. And I'll never forget this incident where, I mean, do you have a friend who's a know-it-all? Like such a know-it-all. And um, Tammy was so smart. She was a visionary and she was the chief imagination officer of multifamily pro. And I'm having this debate with her about the shadow market. And I just know I'm right. 
And she whips out this data and she shows me the data, Daniel, and she shows me why what she's saying is the truth. And she says to me, where's your data? Ah, and you I threw said, down the gauntlet. I said, well, um, it's my opinion. <laughs> and I literally thought to myself, oh my God, sometimes on Facebook, Facebook, what it's the, what if it's the Russians? I mean, where did I get my information? And we are guiding and directing people who are managing portfolios of multi-million dollar real estate assets. So just exactly where did that come from? We, we loved naming this the crystal ball because that's just how crazy it can get. And it's interesting when I talk to developers, they look at developer data. Oh, there's plenty of room to build, <laughs> right? And then you look at people who are already in the market going, uh-uh, no, don't come in here, right? So people find data that kind of backs up their goals today. What we're going to do is we're going to open up and look at where you're getting your thinking. And I want to start with a quote from William Shakespeare. I love to find interesting quotes. And in this quote, he says, there is neither good nor bad. Thinking makes it so. And so I want you to think about what is your perspective on the market and where'd you get it? Do you think the market's good? Do you think there's going to be a recession? Are you now thinking no recession? A lot of people are thinking no recession. But the truth is that whatever you think, thinking is what makes it good or bad. We decide. And I have a statement there that says, I am the creator. And if you're watching this somewhere, I want you to just say out loud to yourself, I am the creator. And I want you to look at that word creator because you've got create or. See, you either create or you get what's there. It's important today that we bring it, that we decide, that we go and find the information. So I'm going to connect you to some of my favorite resources. And here's kind of an overview look at them. You know, where are you looking? Where do you look? This is a list of some of mine. And every single January now, I go look at all the new reports when the trend reports come out. But I've also been starting to set up little brainstorming sessions because I miss that to about five executives a year. So if you're in the chat and you want to be one of my January brainstorms, send me a quick note and let me know that you'd like to join me. All we do is we sharpen our swords. We compare. What are you looking at? What am I looking at? And so over the years, I've developed this list. And in the ebook, I'm going to allow you to have every single one of them, along with the websites that I have RSS that I'm connected to, that I'm getting emails from them, the global reports I follow, all of that is going to be in the ebook. So Hoping good. So you're you're trying to avoid confirmation bias. You got all these news stories. But I remember we had you on the Apartment Academy when we were broadcasting live from NAA, uh, Apartmentalized, a few years ago. And you were sharing some of your predictions based on the research you'd done, some of these websites for that for that coming year. And they were pretty, they were pretty spot on. So and, and I think it's also good that we we don't just go to one source. And I'll tell you something interesting. I have a very engaged social media following. And usually when I put something out there, I will get an overwhelming amount of responses. I put something out and asked my followers and friends to tell me who they follow for their data on the rental market. Crickets. The only thing I got were vendors. All the vendors that sell data were coming on. And so another thing I'm looking for, uh, maybe you'll be brave enough to put it in the chat um, or email me personally, Tony at totallytony.com. I'll tell you something, Daniel, I was blown away at how much of the rental market definition is being done by single family, by the realtors, by the home builders, which I know has a multifamily council, but Come on. Here is um, a thing that was put together in uh, Fortune. And I mean, here is kind of a negative look. They're saying it's softened. Who says it's softened? And each one of them have hot links. Um, I think it's really important we follow our National Apartment Association. So I went and got their data. And again, this data is going to come and go because I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about it. I'm not an economist, but I want you to know resources. I'm an educator. 
I am here to make sure that you have a broad perspective when it comes to you looking at your market condition and making decisions about your portfolio. So um, most of the information inside multifamily is saying that we're all maintaining around 94% occupancy, that it's a moderate growth. Um, I just saw a report that said that there has been a decline. In fact, um, I included that in here. The um, Rental Housing Journal just showed some data points on the renewal growth um, is starting to fall. And I think there is a little softening in the market. I think a lot of people would agree with that. And you'd find a lot of data that would support that. Um, I don't have the data right here, but I also want to mention that everything I've seen about the inflation is that it's going to flatten out at about three or so, and we're going to stay all the way through uh, 2031. That was that weird mountain that we climbed, but we've come down the backside. And the biggest impact of inflation I'm concerned about is the fact that last year your property was reassessed at that inflated amount. And now in a soft market, you're going to have to pay higher taxes you're probably going to have to pay higher interest. Um, you're probably going to have to pay higher insurance. Um, and so even though we have a flat line of inflation, the impact of it is still here. It is still something that we need to be aware of. And, and Tony, um, we're also we're delivering more units into the marketplace. So sort of like a million units over the next 12 months, more units that we've delivered in the marketplace in something like 20 years. So that's sort of stacking on top of these other and impacts to NOI that you're mentioning. Right. And you've got you've got um a uh, uh, different markets that are, you know, sitting pretty and some of them are starting to soften and that kind of thing. But um mostly what I'm seeing is that our industry is pretty steady and pretty strong. And everyone I talk to on lease ups is doing really, really well. And I think that the increase of lease ups right now is that some people last year with inflation held on to their projects. I had one developer tell me that they had not gotten sticks in the ground and that they reassessed the, uh, the bids. The entire project went up 37%. And so I think a lot of people in 2022 may have held on to their projects and said, look, we're not going to build in the top of inflation. We're going to let this uh, supply and demand chain figure itself out and then we'll build this year. So I think yeah. that's why some of that's happening. Yeah. And also, if you look at the basic economic cycles in multifamily housing, there is a natural transition from recession which we know happened back in 09 or whatever, to the recovery where the jobs started coming back, you know, 12, 13, 2012, 2013. And then in, we got the height of some of the rebuild. Uh, I know that there were 35 million young people during the last recession that literally got um, no jobs. And so we had a huge amount of construction that happened initially. Some of the things I saw was that we were going to flatten out in construction around 2017. Here we are looking yeah. at 2024. This has to be the longest expansion cycle that I've ever experienced. And let's not talk about how many decades I've been in this industry, but we are still doing so well. And I want today for us to look at the good news look and, and side table the naysayers and hold on to our rents and, and continue to grow revenues to be smart about it, but to not let a few rattling cages send us over the concession cliff. Um, another thing that I always look at besides the economic stuff is the socioeconomic. Um, I've been following Edelman for a number of years. This is Richard Edelman. He does about 38 countries, and it's the Edelman Trust Barometer. And I think you would agree, Daniel, there is a serious trust crisis in our world. Um, and what he looks at is media, government, and industry. And I would recommend if you're kind of a data geek and you like data, go all the way back with Edelman to 2017, because in 2017 was the very first time that industry became the most trusted institution in our country, where it had been media and it had been government. All of a sudden, people are looking to business. I mean, Facebook and Meta has their feet with flames right now, and the public wants to hold businesses accountable.
And they want businesses to do the right thing. And they're looking to find businesses that they trust. This says there's a total collapse of the sales funnel. Um, here's the next piece of data. And um, unfortunately, this is a little small. I'm, I'm having trouble seeing it myself. I wonder if I could make this bigger. Oh, yay. Um, so um, people are very price conscious. So um, they're looking at prices and because of inflation, even though things have flattened out a little bit, they're comparing more prices, they're doing more research um, and they care about what we're charging and what we're doing. Um, the other thing that Edelman reported in 2023, and this is looking into 2024, is the optimo ec economic optimism collapse that literally 10% of optimism was lost from 50% of people last year that were optimistic about the economy, we're now down to 40. And so I think it's important that we don't just look at the economics, that we look at where people are in the country. And I'll give you an example of that. I've got all these people calling me and the markets are starting to get soft and they're leasing people really need to lease now where they were kind of order taking and facilitators before. Yeah. And they want me to do all this back to basic. But here's what I think. I think there is no going back. Our world is changed. We have been we have been socioeconomically gut punched over and over and over again. Fear is high, overwhelm is high, and a fancy sales pitch. Eh, I don't think that's the way to go. And so I just rewrote leasing and renewals in the spirit of what I call uplifted leasing. And the entire process is to create an experience that uplifts the human heart, that reduces stress, that celebrates their life and has fun on the journey to finding their new home. Is that, uh, Tony, is that a Gen Z related effect? Like oh, this yeah. generation cares more about these sort of softer characteristics in choosing yes. a home and less about just here's Here's the amenity. Here's our price. Don't you want to live? Uh, Wouldn't you love living here? And culture. You hear everything about culture, but understand that your investment in culture is double dollars. Because when you invest in culture, the culture is for the residents and your staff. So when you invest in culture, you're doing something that is and has an impact in two of the greatest um, areas. And I, that Virginia love, I love her. And she, she said something the other day at a conference. She said, the only position in property management that generates income is leasing. Everyone else is just an expense. <laughs> are you an expense or are you generating revenue? And, and today I really, doesn't that give you a whole new look at just leasing? Um, but I really want to look at leasing in this time, in this collapse of optimism in this time socioeconomically. Here's another thing. Businesses have become the truly only trusted generation. It started um, in 2017, but now it's all the way up to 56 points. And every single year, it seems that business continues to grow. People want to know who you are. They want to know how you operate. They want to meet you. They want to do business with good human beings. And in this time of AI and all this talk of AI, I love what AI is going to do in allowing consumers to get information. But relationship is still mano a mano. And according to the HeartMath Institute and their research, there literally is a physiological energy that comes off the human heart that is measurable. It's an electromagnetic field. Are you feeling me all the way from Cleveland, Daniel? <laughs> uh, it doesn't come through the little screen as well. And let me tell you what. Our human spirit, our energy cannot be duplicated. And AI is going to be great for admin, but when it comes to relationship, humans are still going to be a needed, quantifiable, measurable part of our success. So let's look at this next thing from Edelman. He says, business gains most trusted by being the guardian of information quality. Um, and that he just put in September, October, a whole new report out on um, trust in the workplace 
And if you follow him and if you go to the ebook, there's a link that goes right to the Edelman Trust Barometer. But he has a whole new thing. And usually he produces um, a program in the beginning of the year. and But this time he did a second whole new release of data. And it's about the workplace. And 76% of people trust their employer. They trust you. You're you know, we talk about our business family. We spend so much time at work. Um, business is now just not seen as an institution. It's both competent and ethical. And so character and culture, I mean, it's a big, big part of what I believe is, is going to be intricately important in our success in the future. Now, I love trend watching. You're going to see some stuff from trend watching. And some years back, they introduced the glass box. And I found a really great YouTube video that goes through the whole glass box um, technique. And what they're talking about is businesses used to be closed. Like you weren't able to see what was going on in a business. You know, they were the black box and all the information was kept in it and it was kept out. But now companies are opening their doors. They're saying, this is who we are. They're sharing things. I go into corporate offices, Daniel, all the time. And there's these beautiful displays of charitable activities that have been done by the company. Nowhere on site. Why would a company go to all that trouble to, to be that kind of character and not let their residents know? And it's not bragging. It is shared culture. Your teams need a wall that shows the culture, a culture wall, you know, that talks about what's going on in the company and who we are. And then people, I think it's a reason to rent. I think people will rent from people they trust. And, and there was even great data on that. Um, so to kind of wrap up this first crystal ball idea, um, I, I want to say to you, have a broad, I'm sure you do. I mean, I don't mean to say that you don't, but I want to share with you my favorite resources for data points. I think it's so important. Um, a few years ago, I did the All-Stars at NAA. And just from the core of my soul, I started out by saying to the audience, your humanity is your greatest amenity. And the whole room exploded. And now I quote myself. <laughs> Your humanity is still your greatest amenity. One of the things we started doing, um, oh, I need to go to airplane mode, airplane mode. Um, one of the things we started doing a couple of years ago, I call it face forward marketing. So just like realtors put their faces on everything, I've been putting the team's face. This first thing that you see, um, people make the difference, is our meet the team JPEG. It goes, it's one of the very, very first things we share with people when we connect with them. It introduces them to the whole team. It lets them see the person they're talking to, the other team members, and it has a biography of the team. I love this tool. And then we started playing now. I mentioned the idea of having a wall. And you could literally have your core value statement. I kind of mocked one up here. You can see um, um, with your staff photographs. And if you change people, you get another picture. Your iPhone takes great photos and Walgreens will print it for you same day. And what are we doing if our humanity is our greatest amenity to make sure that we let people know who we are and make that a reason to rent? Okay, so there's a... A tough year coming up, perhaps economically, challenging economic picture for, for some folks, which can equal challenging time to maintain rents. And I think uh, to kind of sum up your point here is the first line of defense here is to realize that if you're going to communicate value, uh, it is no longer leading with the carpet and the stainless steel appliances. It's leading with your humanity as a company, who you are, what your values are, because people want to know that they're renting at a place that that is going to that that recognize them sees you uh as a human being uh and promotes that fact that's very interesting mm -hmm.